scriptures for us before the preaching. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. You beat me to it. <laughs> we, uh, we're so glad excuse me, that each and every one of you are here this morning. May you all be blessed by the service of Pastor. He's a, he's just a wonderful, wonderful preacher, and not a half bad neighbor. He's Amen. my neighbor down the street. But if you're if you're with me now, we're in Luke chapter two, starting at the first verse. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all in the world should be and the taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth and into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his excuse me, his spouse, wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For upon, <coughs> excuse me, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were going away, <coughs> excuse me, into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe was lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, can't even speak, excuse me, when it was, they made, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad in saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all came that heard it wondered at those things which were told by them, the shepherds. Verse 19, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Brother Pat? Thank you, Ralph. You're welcome, sir. I asked him to read that. It's a family tradition for us. <clears throat> I don't know what you do, but as our Christmas gatherings, uh, we always read Luke 2, and then uh, we've done it so frequently, so many years that our children now do that. And we got together the other day, uh, my son-in-law was reading Luke 2, and I took a phone out and videoed the crowd, you know, and then I emailed that or sent it or however I did, to the ones that weren't there. So it's just a tradition for us. We're gonna be in Luke 2 this morning for a little bit. We'll be in Luke 1, we'll be in Philippians 2, and wherever else that uh, I can get to. Uh, Bonnie, would you stand up, please? There's an answer to your prayers. Amen. Amen. Our latest ordeal, we won't go into great detail. We got a little cancer and all the other things that she prayed us through. When she took a tumble six weeks ago and broke her shoulder, um, that fracture did not require surgery. And uh, she's in therapy now. So she's here with me and, and uh, just thank you so much. I know you care for her and I know you pray for her. And I appreciate the updates that you send me along the way. Luke in chapter two is where we're at. Christmas is not the same in China as it is here. Christmas is not all over the world, folks. Christ's birth is not important to an atheist, to a communist. But as I drove over this morning from our little place over here, 
I see the businesses were closed. Most of them were closed. It's a respectful thing. Jesus was born. Jesus came to die. We know that. It was the day that heaven came to earth. Amen. The day Jesus was born. Now we're never commanded to celebrate his birth. That's right. We're not. That's right. We are commanded to celebrate his death. He came to die, didn't he? Yes. Praise God. I remember the first time I heard that as an unsaved man, somebody said that they were so happy that Jesus died. I thought, wow, yes. never heard that before. But you know, after being saved now, pushing 40 years, I am happy yes. that he paid that sacrificial Amen. price on Calvary. He came to die on Calvary. It's been said that the, the seed of an eternal God was planted in the soil of humanity. Jesus came. Now, I've, I've said this before. When, when people, when you say the name Jesus, some people think of a baby in a manger. Other people think of a dead man on a cross. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not either Amen. one of those. Amen. Jesus grew up. A perfect, sinless son of God. He grew up. And yes, he died on a cross. But he's not dead today. Amen. So he's not a baby. And he's not a dead man on the cross. Yes. He's alive. I was just talking to him a minute ago. <laughs> I just know that Christmas is a special time. And this morning, I just want to give you some information that might help you along the way. Turn, if you would, to Philippians 2. Keep something there in Luke 2. But turn to Philippians 2. And I'd like to read my favorite verses. Luke 2. You're not allowed to. Philippians 2. You find that by thinking Gentiles eat pork chops. And you stop at the port there at the P. I don't know how you find stuff. Uh, Gentiles do eat pork chops. Jews don't. Philippians 2 and verse 8. Listen to this, what it says. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Look up here just a minute. This next part, if you're saved, if you've been born again, if you have the third person of a Godhead living in you, this part of the scriptures ought to cause you to just feel something. Amen. You say, well, I don't, I don't trust feelings. Well, I enjoy feelings. Yeah. I enjoy it when the Holy Ghost moves in my heart. It yeah. causes me to know that I'm saved. Reading these verses have never lost its thrill to me. Look again. We'll start in verse 8. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's make a prayer. The Father, it's me again. Lord, you allowed me the opportunity and honor to stand in Brother Randy's pulpit. Such a dear friend he has been to me. And in this ministry, he has been a friend. Now, Lord, I pray that you feel me from on high. I, I'll fail miserably if you do not allow me to have the filling of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I need that fluidity of heart and mind and soul where I can preach with unction. I'm not here to entertain, Lord. I'm here to preserve the Word of God through preaching. Preaching changes lives, so help me as I try to preach. 
in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. I don't know what your favorite Christmas activity is, and that's a good thought, Red. I'm sure you'll get some funnies. But I have a buddy, and him and I were buddies. I mean, tight. I was the pitcher. He was the catcher. I was the quarterback. He was the halfback. All the way through the schools. But when we were just little boys, he lived about a hundred rod across the field. Now, some of you know how far that is. But he would call me Sunday morning early. His name is Jim. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Because we opened our gifts on Sunday morning, or not, not Sunday morning, on Christmas morning. And he said, what'd you get? What'd you get? Well, in his family, there was just three children. And in our family, we had the five. And his, his gifts were always bigger than mine. They were always better than mine. But it didn't matter because I got to play with his anyway. <laughs> but he would call me and call me. And then when we later on, as we got older and got cars, he had a, a 63 red Ford Galaxy Touro hardtop with a 352 four barrel in it. I had a 64 red Ford Galaxy 289 four barrel with a three on the four. And we, we looked a lot of light going down the road and then different cars. I loved me some Jim Guyton. He was my buddy. I got married. He was in my wedding. He was one of the important men that day. 53 years ago, we got married. We got married when he was nine. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim, my friend, he was later on my drinking buddy. Don't look at me that way. I wasn't raised in the Bible believing home. I was raised in a strict home. A strict home taught us how to work. But we didn't have a Bible. It wasn't allowed in the church we went to. So my uh, buddy, when I got saved, when I was 33, when I hoisted up the white flag, and as I said, Lord, if you can save anybody, save me. Amen. Hung over in 84 Chevette. You say, can anybody get saved in a Chevette? I did. And I called up Jim and I said, hey, guess what? Oh, no, he said, you didn't do that, did you? He said, I ain't going to last. Are you tired of that? The last drink I ever had was the day before I got saved. And I began to live like my wife was living. And my buddy Jim distanced himself from me. And later on, after 10 or 15 or 20 years, we became acquaintances again and then friends again. And I said, Jim, won't you let me... He said, no, I don't want to hear about it. But he watched my children. He loved my children. He is a wealthy man on a lake, probably a million, million and a half dollar home. We'd go up there and we'd enjoy all his extras. And we were friends again. But he finally came to church. Uh -huh. I'd given him the gospel and he came to church and he sat in the second row. I see him squeezing that pew, but he never moved, and he left quickly. I was 38 years ago that I got saved. Two weeks ago, I was preaching up in Michigan at Open Door Baptist Church. I had texted Jim, and I said, Jim, I'm preaching at Open Door. I know you where it's at in the corner of Wackerley Road and Sturgeon. Would you come at 11 o'clock? He said, I'll, I'll try. 11 o'clock came and he sat right there. He sat right there. Why? I made hell real and heaven hot. No, I was backwards and I did it wrong. Didn't I? You do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I said to him, uh, when I'm done preaching, I said, if you're not ashamed of Christ and You'd acknowledge publicly that you've been born again and know for sure you're going to heaven. Would you raise your hand? His big old arm went up like oh, this. The Amen. Way up high like that. I'm telling you what. 
How about did a dance? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think that your friends can't get saved? Amen. Oh, we had a visit after church. Good visit. I spoke to him again. I spoke to him and we've been texting crazy lately. Turn back to Luke. Luke chapter 1. Now begin the message. You say, you're going to be long? No, I'm never long. <laughs> Luke chapter 1. Look at your word in verse 19. Luke 1, 19. In fact, uh, go to verse uh, 13. No, go to verse 10. We'll start there. Luke 1, 10. Well, that gave some of them time to find the page. <laughs> Luke chapter 1, verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, and they appeared unto him an, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and, fe and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Look up here. These are old people. It tells you later. Well stricken. Way past the childbearing years. And now this angel shows up. And says hey by the way. Fear not. Fear not. I suppose Zechariah was a little bit shocked. That the angel would show up to begin with. Yeah. But then he says fear not. And he says, your prayers are answered. I read this the other day. It's the first time I've seen it, Brother Paul. This man was way, him and his wife, way past the childbearing years. But yet, she's going to have a baby. And God said to me the other day, hey, listen up, Patrick. Your prayers that you prayed 25 years ago, I can answer them when I'm ready. Uh -huh. They're not forgotten. That gave me comfort. That gave me comfort. We prayed for our grandbabies when they were born. Oh God, get them saved. Keep them safe. We got a dozen of them now. We're, we're also GG's, great grandpa. I got a grandson, Brian Baggett's boy, is preaching this morning at his church. I got a grandson that's six foot six doing his Sunday school class this morning. We are blessed. Yes. But the prayers of the saints are not forgotten. He said, fear not. Now go down to Luke 1, chapter 30. You know that Elizabeth is having baby John. John the Baptist, of course. Cousin to Jesus. But if you stop in verse... 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her mind what manner of salutation this should be. There it is, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor in thy sight. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him Jesus. That word Jesus. Such power. Amen. Such power. <coughs> We've spent several Christmases in China. Jesus is not mentioned there. Oh, there's, a, there's those that huddle in the corner that my son-in-law was able to help start churches. But here you see business clothes out of respect and it's a Christian, Christian remembrance. But Jesus is not everywhere. But here, this angel is saying, fear not, and call his name Jesus. Zechariah, when, when they came and said, fear not, he was to pray. He had been praying, but he's to pray some more. Well, here Mary... Mary's pondering, it says. I always wonder what that word was. Nice word. Ponder. Okay, I know what it means. 
I went to the school, stupid, and came out that way, right? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> ponder. But she's not told to ponder. She's told to perform. Zacharias is to pray. And Mary is to perform. What is she to do? She's to have a baby. My wife, going through this therapy on her shoulder, hurt something, I imagine. I don't know. I just kind of go in the other room. <laughs> Women are built for pain. <laughs> they have the babies. That's the way it is. But Mary is to have a baby. She's to perform, but she's also supposed to raise this boy. She is to perform. Angel says, fear not, Mary. She was concerned because here she is with child and never been with a man. And then you got Joseph, the most noble man in the Bible. Here he's got his, his engaged espoused wife and, 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 and going to be married to her. And she shows up with child. Embarrassed he would be. She could be stoned. But what does he do? He says, I'll put away privately. That's what it says. He'll do it. He'll give her some honor. He'll not shame her. What a noble man. But then, of course, he gets some notice that uh, it was the Holy Ghost that conceived. So Mary is to perform. Zechariah is to pray. And then look at Luke 2.8. 2, Luke 2.8. 2, Luke 2, verse 8. And they're in the same country. Christ shepherds abiding in their field, watching over their flock. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, fear not. So he heard fear not from Zechariah. He's to pray. Fear not to Mary. You're to perform. And here the shepherds, what are they to do? And behold, I bring thee great tidings of, of good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. And unto you is born this day the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. You see, Jesus Christ, Jesus is his name. Christ is who he is. He's the Messiah. It's, it's not his first and his last name. He's Jesus. But he is the Christ. Amen. And this should be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on the earth peace and goodwill towards me. And now drop down to verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God yes. for all the things. So the shepherds are to fear not, but they're to praise. Yes. Okay, so there's my alliterated statements. Zechariah was to pray. You are to pray. You are to pray. Because, number one, he hears your prayers. Amen. He hears a lost man's prayers, too. Don't get confused. You can find that. Where? Well, let me think. Uh, Hezekiah. He, he rolled over. He got his prayer answered. So, so Zechariah was to pray or to pray. Mary was to fear not. She was to perform. You are to perform. What are you supposed to do? Well, live like God wants you to. And then the last one is the shepherds. They're to praise God. Praise God. Now, there's just a few things that will help you praise God. First of all, Jesus should be your joy. Jesus should be your joy. You are saved, folks. I see so much red in the room. You know, but when I see red, I, I always think of the blood of Christ. I'm just that way. I, I, I know what took my sins away. In, in China, red is luck. You'll see the taxi cabs, they'll take a red rag and tie it around their mirror, on the outside of their side mirrors, for luck. And I see this Toyota over there. Honey, see the two? It, it was smashed up on at least three out of the four corners, and then the one mirror was kind of dangling, had that red rag around. I said, how's that working for you? <laughs> I don't believe in luck. 
The word luck stands for the Lord's undying care and kindness. If you are born again, I'm talking, you have met the most famous person in the world. You just didn't know his name. You had an experience. You had the experience of having your sins forgiven. Yes. Now here's what you better get a hold of, folks. And some of you haven't got a hold of it yet. The moment you got saved, for me, it was right here. July 21st, 1984. All my sins that I had sinned about to that date were forgiven. Now, it's been 38 years. All these sins, and all the sins I'm going to do tomorrow, and all the sins I'm going to do the next day, are already forgiven. Amen. 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 The Bible says in Ephesians, you're already seated in heavenly places. <coughs> Don't you get hooked up with the major denomination thinking that think, when I confess my sins, I'll get some more forgiveness. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with repentance and admitting that you've sinned. But you're already accepted in the beloved. Amen. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. You don't get any more forgiveness. That's not a Bible teaching. You got me on that? Yeah. You are saved. You're somebody going somewhere. I'm going to act like it. Jesus would be our joy. That's the thing we need to do. If we want to show others what, see, we need to be engaged with our family. We need to embrace Jesus and then engage our family. And then we ought to enjoy serving God. So the first thing you need to do is understand that Jesus is your joy. You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, you got a mansion. But the mansion's only the end result. Yeah. I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah. I'm enjoying walking with the Lord. Yeah. Open up the Bible every day before Facebook. That ought to light your fire. That ought to put some pep in your step. Come on now. It, it, we ought to, Jesus should be our joy. And see, when you got saved, you got the DNA of God. I don't know if you knew that. When you got saved, God's blood. Oh, I haven't got time to preach all that. See, secondly, not only would Jesus be our joy, but love would be our language. Love should be your language. It says in First uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, 8, 8 it says to prove the sincerity of your love I was just talking to Bill James he's the only guy in here that's got two first names <laughs> he's telling me he bought his sweetie a one carat diamond <gasps> he's got it don't ever think he ain't got it <laughs> but what was he doing showing off no she's not even wearing it he was proven the sincerity of his love. Yes. You came here this morning, not for anybody else, but just you and Jesus. You're serving the Lord. Yes. When you go out today and you see someone and, and you're, you're kind, see, mercy should be your attitude. Mercy should be your attitude. Don't hold grudges. Bitterness is poison to the soul. Uh, some people are so negative. Be a little more positive. I mean, some people are so negative when they walk into a dark room, they would develop. <laughs> I mean, faithfulness, faithfulness ought to be our aim. I mean, uh, grace, uh, it's been said that grace is a movement of God towards us. You were saved by grace. You didn't do anything to get saved. You just believed. You believed you need a Savior. And you got one. You say, well, how do you know you're saved? I was there when it happened. <laughs> yeah. so, so grace is any movement of God towards us. And faith is any movement of you towards God. Now, we live by faith. We step out on faith. 
We do some things in faith. But we read the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. Not just a preacher expounding. But you reading. You reading. The Bible will clean you up and clean you out. It will change your vocabulary. Amen. I can tell you that. Truth should be your passion. Truth should be your passion. The truth of the word of God. Don't be unkind. Be a kind one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Be that guy. Be that one. It's like Hank. Hank, stick your hand in the air. Right there. Kindest man I know right there. Yes. Kindest man I know. And I get around. Kindest man I know. Every time we talk, he wants to know how Bonnie is, how my unsaved brother Joe is. He's asked me about my mother, who's 95 and doing well. She's just younger than Hank. <laughs> but truth ought to be your passion. Faithfulness ought to be your aim. Faithfulness. You know, some of you sit in the same seat every time. That's a good thing. That's your spot. That's your spot. But if a visitor is in your spot, don't do what happened to us a while back. Yeah. We, we walked in this church, walked slant on the floor, walked down to the front. We were there 45 minutes early. Sat down, just me and Buddy, sat in our, in our usual spot right there. And uh, a little while later, two women come in and they stood at the end of the row. I said, good morning morning. I said, did you want to get through? And she said, well, we usually sit right there. 350 seats. <laughs> so we, uh, we got up and we, we moved back a row. A little while later, here come two more. We finally got up, stood in the back, waiting for them to help. It didn't change much. Yeah, you can have a spot, but give it up if you need to. Oh, yeah. Faithfulness ought to be your aim. I mean, you ought to be faithful to your family. Call your family today. Well, they didn't call me. <laughs> well, step out. Truth ought to be your passion, yes. And faithfulness ought to be your aim. But mercy ought to be your attitude. Amen. Mercy ought to be your attitude. Known as a man who doesn't hold a grudge. Known, known as a lady who can always forgive. Treat them like it, it never did happen. And gentleness ought to be your actions. That Proverbs 25 where it says a word fitly spoken is like golden apples and a, and a pitcher of silver. You know the verse. They put that on greeting cards. Sounds real nice. Nice image. But the fact is, you know that you can patch up some of the things that you share harboring against other people. You know you can fix that. You want to give somebody a good Christmas gift? Fix it. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, pray about it. Yeah. Pray about it. Get some words from God. Gentleness ought to be your action. Truth ought to be your passion. Faithfulness ought to be your aim. Mercy ought to be your attitude. Love ought to be your language. And Jesus ought to be your joy. Amen. And lastly, God's glory should be your goal. Given God the glory. Amen. I mean, the three R's in school was reading. Right. Right. Well, mine was running, wrestling, and recess. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to 1 Timothy. We'll close with this. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Brother Red, that's New Testament. Just trying to help out my friend. First Timothy chapter one. Known Red for about twenty-five years. First Timothy. I know. I'm sorry. First Timothy one fifteen. I want to read you the Apostle Paul. It says. And this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus, Christ, that Christ Jesus came into the world 
to save sinners of whom I am the chief. I just really got a better explanation of that the other day. For years I thought Paul was saying he was, uh, he was the worst sinner in the world. That's really what I thought. But as I researched that and read a little further, Paul was leading the rebellion of Christianity. He wanted it stopped. He was killing the Christians. He wanted Christianity to die. And he was killing them. So was he the worst sin in the world? No. But he was the chief of the onslaught against Christianity. He was the leader of the parade against Christianity. He was the chief. He was the leader. He was the Gestapo of the group. Paul is saying here, verse 16, how bit for this cause I obtain mercy. You're here this morning and you have never received the mercy of God. The greatest gift that was ever given was Jesus Christ. Amen. He came to die on Calvary, but you can have that gift freely. One free to him, but you can have it. Right where you're sitting, you can ask Christ to save you. And if you're here this morning and you are saved, Jesus is your joy. Yes. Mercy is your attitude. Faithfulness is your aim. Truth can be your passion. Gentleness should be your action. And you want to give God some glory. And here's what you need to do. You need to embrace Jesus. You need to engage the family. Engage the world. And what will that do? Number one, that will encourage others. That will encourage others. Let's bow our heads. You're here this morning and you know you're saved. You've had the Jesus experience or he forgave you and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you are saved. You are saved. You're not ashamed of it. You'll extend that right arm and say, yes, I'm saved. Would you put your head up, please? Would you show the Lord by an uplifted hand that you know that you're saved? You know that you're saved. I'm looking around. I see some hands. I see some others. Put your hands down, please. Thank you. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. Maybe you've just never understood how simple the plan is. He died, shed his blood. He was the son of God. He never sinned. He was perfect. He paid the penalty to redeem you from the sin that you already have. You're born that way. You're a sinner. A dog is not a dog because he barks. A dog is a dog because he was born a dog. And you were born a sinner. So here's what you can do. It's Christmas. No better day than to be saved on Christmas. Yes. We have people in this room. It's her birthday today. I have a niece. It's her birthday today. And we know that it actually wasn't Christ's birthday. He was born sometime in the end of March, 1st of April. But we celebrate it. So on this day with your head bowed. You could pray a prayer silently to a risen Savior. Here's your prayer. Dear Jesus, are you praying silently? Dear Jesus, I, I don't want to go to hell. I know I'm a sinner. Are you praying? I ask you to forgive me. I know you died on Calvary for me. I know your blood will cleanse me. Jesus, save my soul. Take me to heaven when I die. Your head's bowed. Your eyes are closed. You prayed that prayer this morning. And you meant it. It was your prayer. It was your day. No one looking around. You prayed that prayer. Would you simply just look up at me and say, I prayed it. I meant it. Are there others? Are there others? I see that. Are there others? Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. This brother... Paul comes to the, for the invitation. 
be thinking right now. Am I merciful? Am I as faithful as I could be? Is my passion for truth? Am I as kind as I could be? Is there room for improvement? You know, an altar is a place where we alter our life. It's a time to start afresh and anew. To come to an altar because we want to. We've had church, Holy Ghost is speaking to you, and you want to come to speak to God. Father, do what's needed in our hearts. Paul, what are we singing? Hymn number 85. 85. Would you turn this on, Brian? 85. Would you stand? Would you come? The altar's open. Hymn number 85. I will sing.